<laughs> Maybe he ran up to the fan. Fuck you. <laughs> I think he did just well. No one ripped just it. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, Shadow's in here. Lack of air conditioning, laggy or boring machine. There you guys. What? You guys should have used another vendor. Nice. So, in any event. Um, What's the name of our guy? Blisterfer. Point out towards the uh, the light skies. I go always in service. It does. I'm sorry. Let me sit you quizzically. In our city? Has anyone been up there? No reason to be. There was a time when magic users could send us through that hole up there, and it was much more convenient to reach the service. But since the dwarves came and went, we haven't had that ability. So it is, we're here. And it's there. Did you want those masks then? Yes, sure. The two over there of yonder, uh, two, two workers have thusly stitched, they've uh, carved at a wedged angle two of the masks and stitched them together, and then stitched them, stitched their straps at the back, so that you can basically just like wrap it around your head and it scoops up against your beak and just like literally slips up over your head and now it's just this uh, wrapping that comes across both sides. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. So. Uh, it does. Manages to go around you. Uh, stretch a little bit at first and nuzzles in. Just fine. Your beak rests in the packing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold on, the seal is not tight enough. Is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So, uh, you're putting the mask on, everything's well and good. Um, you've seen all the different workshops, you've seen that they have a somewhat of a farm industry here. They give you uh, a couple of little sacks of packing, and uh, Blisterfer tells you you have to replace the wadding inside of the mask every day. Every day that you're down here, you'll have used it enough if you're breathing steadily through it that you'll need to replace it. Now, this is for us little folk, but it should be the same for you as well. Absolutely. On sheer physical bodies alone. You're right, but I'm trying to be nice. I'm saying it to the little gnome. He looks up at you and says, It's not so much about the amount. I'm not going to explain it. We will be in combat. We are much larger. We breathe more. We will burn through these a lot faster. When you take it out of the bag, it will start to deteriorate. There you go. Ha! Well, that's, gotcha. That's true with any gas mask. You actually are supposed to put the filter cartridges in a plastic bag so they're not absorbing the toxic shit. How about that, eh? Anyway, so as the little gnome says, shit up. And <laughs> Mike, what'd you have to say? How many, how many days worth did you give us? Two. Two days? Two days worth. And he says, making the filter material is not hard. If you can find the material, if you can find the fungus. Take his. Fair enough, actually. Uh, you don't know that I don't have to breathe. So, he, uh, he looks upon uh, one of the workers and gives him a wave over. The worker comes over with a little stalk See, and, a little, and a little knife. And he started <laughs> whittling a bunch of thin sheaths expertly off of the uh, off of the <clears throat> stalk. He then takes that. It looks like basically carved cheese. And he takes that off and he puts the little piece. He gives the piece actually to Blister where he holds it. As the worker then takes that and he carves it another certain way. You know how like people carve up watermelon in fancy patterns or carve it. You know, someone really knows what they're doing, right? So he yeah, just carves it all in his hand and then he crushes it. 
and reveals it. It's literally just like a piece of gum at this point, wadding. Still moist from the juices in it, and he holds it like that. He says, hey, you take that, and you put it in a little sack, and it's sealed up, and it'll be a good filter when you take it out. I asked him for a piece of practice. He uh, goes like this to Blistifer. Blistifer holds forth the little piece of stock that he had in his hand, and uh, the, uh, the gnome next to him holds forth the draw knife. Uh, you may roll dexterity without proficiency. Without proficiency, so then I don't get dexterity, so why say that? You get dexterity, not proficiency. So anything. Fantastic stuff. Expertly, you're like, hah, 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 hah. then you think about it, hah, 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 hah. and then you try to squish it, and you don't have uh, quite the palm, so you just do this. And it turns out pretty good. You hold it up. Oh, so that's about right. Yep. He does not. Just check. It's like a chicken hand. It is very moist, though. The stuff is very moist when you carve it up. And he says to you, when it loses the moisture, it has lost its effectiveness. It's dry and no. Wherever you can get it, whatever, right? So that said, um, the gnome backs off and uh, goes back to his duty, for, uh, leaving you with the draw knife. Lucifer says, you now have an idea of how to put it together. Don't forget, that may save your life down there in the depths. We also have a, he fumbles around and produces a parchment, a map. This will take you down to the lower corner, and then finally, if it's still there, the, uh, the elevator. The lift will take you down to the very core of the volcano. Which part of the mushroom does this jump stop? Uh, you want small mushrooms. Early baby fungus. It's all the same. Okay. I take them out and start comparing it to the one uh, John Quest. It starts out beyond the city. John Quest ends um, just... I'm pretty sure he did the whole thing. Yeah. No, that's right, too. He didn't make the whole um, John Quest actually doesn't take the elevator. John Quist shows a path uh, situating back and forth, whereas the elevator veers off and suddenly is just one straight shoot down. What was the last time any of your uh, people We don't know because they haven't made it back recently, but anybody who has been recorded to return from there? About 30 years. Where does it veer off towards the elevator? Is it like from the city, like this way? And it no, it's it's quite a ways way? down the or distance. Both the same direction, and then it veers. Both very much the same direction, and then they veer. Well, I think we make the choice we can get from the crossroads. Mm -hmm. we'll like Ruba. Maybe we'll run into some of the gnomes on the way back. And you can the yes, that's what I'm talking. <laughs> How long ago did I say that John Quest made the journey? Oh, okay. Just said he was there once on Pilgrimage. Yeah, it would have been it would have been twenty years ago. So John Quest is a 47, 48 year old dragonborn ish. So he's up there. Yep. Lucifer looks at you with a nodding. Yeah, you will be. And starts walking away with his hands folded behind his back. You assume that is meant for you to follow. I do. With a lot of you in tow, he hits the staircase at the back, uh, heading upwards, as a matter of fact, and the staircase rounds the chamber, coming to a bit of a plateau that it follows along on a cliff face. From here, you can see several chuffing industrial buildings echoing their business into the into the air. Um, as you come upon uh, the doorway of the first, you see that it's a large steel entryway, and looking to the right, you can see a crane system 
that is uh, meant to meet down into the valley below. You can't see anything of what they're doing behind that door. You continue moving along in tow behind uh, Blistifer. As he continues on, reaching to the uh, one of the last uh, doorways on this cliffside plateau, he reaches a man door set in the side next to a similar large steel, kind of like a garage door, if you will, uh, with a crane system in front of it. He gets to the man door and starts jangling a set of keys, lifting one out. He tries it. It's not the right one. He tries another one. No. And finally, no, that wasn't it either. Hang on. It's in here somewhere. Eventually, he finds the key. Click. He unlatches the door. And opening it up with a squeak, he steps inside and uh, fumbles around for a moment, grabbing a hold of something. He kerchunk and you hear And the room inside begins to illuminate. As it glows orange, suddenly brightened up by torch sconches in the walls, lit by an uh, immense, uh, some sort of flammable gas coming from somewhere. The room presents a large machine and you don't know how to describe it at first, but it's got treads and a capsule and several dwarven inscriptions down the side. I've seen this before. No, you've never seen anything like it. But looking upon it... I've seen, I've seen one a little before in uh, the showers, yeah. It doesn't have the guns. In the showers? In the showers, in the showers of the YMCA, CA, yes. So in any event, looking into the chamber, you see a large treaded vehicle of sorts, and it has a big uh, drill screwdriver on the front. And Blistifer walks towards it and says, it doesn't currently run. But um, the drill works. It was slated to be dismantled, but we haven't had a necessity for it of late. So it's that derelict here. We also have those, and he points over towards a bench. And you see upon the bench several guns and pieces of guns. As well as armors, hammers, and various parts. Just parts of what you assume to have been the ships, or perhaps other machinations that the dwarves had brought. I'm like, I can fix this. I can fix this. My father was a sheep herder. <laughs> Five experience. <coughs> a silver magic hammer? Yeah, you want to put a silver magic hammer? This is how you do it. Okay, look. Everybody, listen. Um, this is called an injection. My name's Angry Little Cloud, too, and I want to tell the DM in Dungeon Master CA that there's a silver hammer sitting on the bench. So I type exclamation mark inject. <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, you know what? I have I have 500 XP because I'm a noob at this. So I'm gonna say inject 500. There's a silver hammer on the bench in the chamber in the room. All right. And so the XP fairy tells me that I'm awesome. He gives me a pat on the back or maybe a swift kick in the balls because I did code her to be a bitch. But that said, there's now fucking injection there. I'm gonna say. Hot damn, look at the newbie doing something cool, like suggesting a fucking silver hammer there. And I'm gonna go, uh, all right, well, that sounds good to me. And then I'm gonna say, that silver hammer should be worth like a thousand XP, because I have plans for it. So I'm gonna go, uh, a thousand, one set. And now I set the goal for that for a thousand, right? But then I say, I really like that idea as DM, and they've already put 500 towards it. So I'm going to go and put 500 into it myself. And I add 500, bringing it to 1,000. Oh, wait, I meant to actually, yeah, I did set it to 1,000. Anyway. So at this point, when this refreshes, we can see that I've actually put all of that on the wrong injection altogether because I myself keep forgetting how my injections work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you whatever. You were new this. this yeah, you're, no, whatever. You're a total new. I had a mod that handled Anyways. this. Anyways. He's showing the viewers how to do this. So that all said, as you guys are standing there, uh, standing in the room looking at the treaded vehicle, uh, your attention is caught upon a little clawed silver hammer situated on the bench, and a light breeze 
breezes across you guys in this small room and you all take inspiration. 